So for the process of getting everything in Unreal, we're going to start inside of Blender. Uh, what I'm doing here is, again, you wouldn't do this really for standard game assets, but I'm purposely setting the the pivot points and the origins to have an offset inside of Blender so that when I bring them into Unreal, I can just drag them all in as one and they'll be set up exactly as I have it here. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, you'll see more of what I mean inside of Unreal when we get to that section later in the video. But basically, it allows me to do the set dressing here. It's much easier to move things around here, get everything in place, set the rotation as I want it so that the general layout is done before it moves to Unreal. This also means that I can do things like what I'm doing here is adding the deformation modifiers. It means that I can see exactly what that will look like in place at the, the back of the diorama rather than being in the center of the world in the pivot point there. It's a little bit harder to get an idea of if everything lines up, if everything's the right scale, has the right deformations and things. So you can see I'm doing the same with the, the tomb now as well. So that's really the, the main reason for doing this. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to save out the locations before exporting it, which means the pivot point will still be kind of central to the world. But when it gets brought into Unreal, the, the asset itself will have the same offset that it does inside of Blender. So that's, yeah, really all I'm doing here. Just applying some simple to form modifiers to, to get everything looking much closer to, to what I had in the template, but of course, tidying it up and getting the, the scaling and everything looking much, much cleaner. With the deformation modifiers applied, uh, everything's pretty much in place. The last thing was just to move the, the pumpkin where I wanted it. The stone was the only thing that I left where it was and the base. With all of that done, the standard process of getting it exported and then we're just going to import this into the, uh, the folder structure I'm making here, ready for the assets. Uh, with all of the assets ready to go, the first thing I wanted to do was test the, the textures. I've not actually seen this before now. Uh, this is really my first approach of doing this, and I just recorded it as I went through, which is probably why it was eight hours in total. So yeah, the first thing I wanted to do was to see how this all looked, getting the textures and the, the material set up on the assets. So that's what I'm doing is just bit creating a very simple base material. The albedo or the color is coming from the texture. All of the meshes had the assets exported in the same way. So they will have a couple of different textures, one for the normal, one for the color, uh, one for the opacity, roughness and metallic combined. You can see here, I've hooked up the wrong thing. So I've actually hooked up the alpha rather than the blue. I do fix that later. Sorry if that's bugging you at the moment, but I don't realize that for a little while. So that's what I meant in the previous video that everything's been packed into different channels though to save a little bit of space because we don't need a texture just for opacity, one for roughness and one for uh, metallic. They've all been packed into one. Then just to highlight again what I was saying a little bit earlier in this video, inside of Blender, the, the whole changing the, the pivot points around and everything like that. What that has allowed me to do is I can come in here, as I said, select all of the assets at once, drag them into the world, and they are all now in the right place. So the set dressing, the location and everything, I can zero these out in the world inside of Unreal, and the diorama is laid out as I wanted it to be. That means the only thing I need to do is really set the rocks and place a few rocks into random positions, but I can reuse the asset for that anyway. Applying the first material, uh, I can tell something was off. I remember t thinking that something wasn't quite right, which is because, again, I've plugged in the wrong channel. But overall, I was quite happy. You could see the normals coming through, the detail from the orc skin in the pumpkin. Uh, and I was quite happy for my first attempt at this type of thing with the way this turned out. So yeah, there's me just remembering that I didn't uh, set up the metallic properly. The rest of this was really just applying the, the rest of the materials to the other assets, just checking again that they've all kind of come across properly. As I said, haven't seen the textures since exporting them from Substance. So just creating a material instance for each of these, applying the, the relevant textures, and then applying the material instance to the asset that it's meant to be linked with. So in a moment, this is going to be where we can see that I forgot to apply separate materials to the, the diorama base, the ground. And we can see here that gives it a weird kind of shading effect at the the bottom part of that uh, adjoining piece where the wood and the ground would be meeting i'll leave that for a little bit i uh, just want to get the rest of the the general design in place as i said i'm just going to take the same rock we'll rotate this and scale it pretty much then looks like different rocks and we just get this uh, all from one asset so trying to keep this as efficient as possible so I play around with getting some rocks into to place randomly again just to add some extra noise and detail I had a very specific thing in mind where I didn't want a fully detailed ground, so where the dirt and gravel was going to be. I wanted to keep that looking fairly empty and clean, and you'll see what I mean. It, it's going to involve some vertex painting. You'll see how that comes together a little bit later. 
just setting up some of the basic lighting. I'm using the 5.1 preview version of the Unreal Engine at the moment. The new map actually came with everything that I needed here, including a sky sphere. So I got rid of that. That was the only thing I didn't need. But everything else, we wanted the directional light, the exponential height fog, sky atmosphere, skylight and volumetric cloud were all there. And it's just a case of me playing around with those. So this is another thing which will become very, very evident as you're watching this, that I'm not familiar with set dressing a level or kind of level design at all. So this is me just fumbling around with different settings, different seeing what different intensities do. I knew that I wanted it to look kind of foggy. I didn't want it to be super clear. I really liked the shadow shafts, I suppose we'd call this. They're not really light shafts at this stage. I was getting close to something that I liked here. But yeah, this is just a lot of me fumbling around, trying to work out what different settings do, because something else I'd like to become more familiar with less of the the coding side of things inside of unreal but also how to make things look good how to get good renders setting up lighting post-process and things like that something i forgot to mention earlier on is i from the beginning wanted to make the pumpkin look different to a lot of the other examples i'd seen when i was getting inspiration they normally have the the top connected and the something interesting sprouting out of the head or whatever i purposely wanted to cut an extra part of the pumpkin out because normally you would carve that anyway and I, I was kind of hoping that when it gets to this stage, it would make for an interesting lighting effect. So getting the light coming through the mouth and the eyes, as well as the top. And I think that, that did actually work quite well here because of the proximity to the tomb. We've got the, the mouth casting some light onto the floor, and then that exposed top of the pumpkin casting just a section of the tomb, which I, I think looked really cool in the end. So I was quite happy with that. You can see me playing around with setting everything to be a nanite mesh. I don't know if I didn't have quite enough detail or if I'd set the meshes up incorrectly, but I ended up disabling that. It didn't look good having those set to be nanite meshes. So it's something else to play around with with the new features. But yeah, that was a, probably another case of uh, user error and me modeling those incorrectly to have the correct topology or tidiness of UVs or whatever it's requiring for nanite to be for that to be set up correctly. Just adding some random lights here, I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing to do, but getting those different contrasting colours from across the, the colour wheel, I know that can look pretty good, and I was quite happy with how this ended up looking. So we've got the orange coming from the, the pumpkin, suggesting that there's a candle light or something in there, and then purple and green seem to contrast those quite well. Hard cut to Blender here, where I go back and add in those uh, materials that I mentioned. So we've got the, the top and the base material, basically wanting to keep the the base of the base having that wooden texture and then you can see here now this is properly applied when I re-imported this the material slot for the the top of the ground and this is where we're going to get into the vertex painting so a lot of this as I mentioned if you wanted to watch the full length thing you can watch me fumble around in the entirety trying to work out how to set up a vertex painting material something I have done maybe once or twice I forget how to do every single time I come back to it I've implemented this effect into other things like some of my game jam entries where I have a mostly blank ground and you can see me trying to get that here whilst working out the, the different color schema and everything. But the goal is to have a mostly clear ground. I, I don't know why I really like the look of this effect where it looks as though you've, it's very clear that you've intentionally left most of this untextured and then just the area surrounding the kind of visual aspects, the the important aspects of the scene have some detail painted around them and i knew i wanted to do this very early on from when i was modeling so if you've watched the other videos you'll notice that i've added a lot of vertex information into the the top of the ground area which you may have been wondering why i added so much detail there since it was never sculpted on it's because i knew that i'd want to do this vertex painting and have enough vertex information to to not have this looking blocky when i painted it on just playing around getting the, the general kind of layer on here. And then once I've got this layer of paint added to the ground, uh, you can see what I mean there, that everything is kind of blotchy, but um, hopefully intentionally blotchy. And then it's just a case of playing around with the colors. And that's basically what I do for the rest of the video here is just trying to set this up, allowing for some flexibility with the color which is being applied to the ground. With that complete though, I was again quite happy with the way that turned out. I think uh, in comparison to other times when I've used that, it doesn't look quite as I'd expected uh, when concepting it in my mind. I think in the, the game jam entries and things where I've used that, I had a lot more space, so it kind of looked clearer 
Um, I think here yeah, because there's so much information all packed in it does look just a little bit messy but I'm kind of happy with that. It's, it's ground, it's dirt, it's fine. And then the final step is going through the final kind of lighting pass, changing the intensities, making sure everything looks softened where it needs to be, getting the shadows to, to look a little bit nicer and then introducing as you've seen here the post-process volume. So it's just going to be a very basic post post-process effect going on. Set this to infinite extents so it affects everything. And like with what I mentioned with the other lighting, uh, this is just a lot of me fumbling around with different effects, just seeing what different things I can toggle on and off or increase or decrease the strength of and how that will affect the overall scene. I really didn't know what I was going for here. I knew I kind of wanted it to be a nighttime scene or a nighttime render. I didn't have like a certain color scheme or anything in mind. So it's really just playing around with all of the different effects. And that's really what this was intended to be, just a way and a specific project for me to work on to get more comfortable with this part of the pipeline with Unreal. I realized a few things here. I wanted to get a, a nice depth of field and 5.1 preview seems to have a different depth of field set up in the post-process than I remember seeing. Uh, and this actually seems a lot easier to use. So something I'm looking forward to playing around with more in the future. I think we can probably get some really nice looking results of this using this in game. Uh, I realized that the lens flare really didn't provide much benefit here. And trying to use the assets which were already provided by the uh, the directional light and the, the new sky system, I noticed that if I turn the, the, the angle down here, I can get this to be a kind of more bluish, smaller sphere when you press play. So it looks more like a moon rather than the sun shining down here. So that was quite a nice effect as well. Everything else is just kind of me playing around with the colors and going through the getting a different temperature and film grading and things like that. So again, things I've never really played with before, but just getting familiar with. I guess the last big thing that I've changed here is to introduce a cube map. So getting a, a real time light capture, just using again, some of the default built in engine content provided. I figured we've got all of this PBR stuff going on, the reflections from the, the metal. I'll try and get a uh, kind of make use of what the skylight's providing as well. So just playing around with different effects and the different results from the various cube maps available. But yeah, with after all of that tweaking, the final results, as I've uh, teased a few times at the, the beginning of these videos, I'll let the, the full animation play at this time. So this is the final result. I went back in after recording all of this and set up a very simple cinematic camera and a track for the camera. Just animated this through a level sequence just to do a full kind of spin round of the diorama, just getting more familiar with things like that as well. Basically, in all of my years of using Unreal, if it hasn't been gameplay or game mechanic code related, I really haven't looked at much of the engine is what I've realized. So just spending more time to get familiar with those types of things as well, uh, cinematic renders and things like that. Hopefully you like the results. Uh, as I said, happy to do more of these. If you have suggestions for kind of styles of diorama that you want to see, I, I quite like the process of going from Blender going through modeling, sculpting, substance to, to Unreal. Gets the whole kind of pipeline down, which I think is going to be really useful to know. And when I'm more comfortable on the, the kind of modeling and asset creation side of things, definitely something I want to recover and uh, be happy to share with, with you in a, a more kind of long form tutorial approach. So as I've said, if that is something you want to see, it definitely helps on this type of thing because it's very experimental. This isn't me just asking for the YouTube algorithm engagement. Leave a comment below leave a like to let me know that this stuff is either interesting or useful or a comment to say that you find it interesting or useful or whatever and i'll add more of this to the channel alongside the the upcoming standard unreal tutorials and things like that that i have planned i've also released a video covering the entire process it took about eight hours in total from start to finish of getting it in unreal if you wanted to see that in its mostly uncut form then click on the video being recommended to you at the right of the screen just here